what's up everybody it's may money back again oh my gosh you guys <sighs> we are back i know you guys know what i'm talking about v100 the hundred is back and i'm so excited to be doing reactions and reviews every week with you guys for the next what however many weeks that the show's gonna be on <sighs> Yes. So, a little bit of backstory. So, this is my recap video for episode one, season of season four, entitled Echoes. Um, and I just want to give you a little backstory on like how I got like into the show and everything, just real quick. So, the first time, this is the first season that I'm seeing like episode by episode. I have to wait every you know week to get the new episode because I binged to watch season one through three. Um, I started it in like August and then yeah so I just was able to watch it on Netflix and stuff and so it's just kind of a, a new experience I'm not used to having to wait episode by episode for this show um so we'll see how I feel about that later on but so far it's all good in the hood for me one second the only problem with it is is so I uh, so I haven't had a cable like my entire life like we never had freaking cable until recently maybe like a year ago and my mom uh, got like direct tv and so i like am not really familiar with the whole tv direct tv thing because i use netflix and i use my playstation amazon all types of other platforms to get like shows and stuff so um i went i moseyed on downstairs like mm -hmm, i'm so ready for the hundred and I went, and we didn't have freaking CW. And I'm like, wow, this is like basic ass fucking cable. And we ain't got the CW? What the fuck is up with that? And then, freaking, um, and then, like, we have a, t a TV that's not hooked up to cable. And it has, like, all the Mexican channels and all the Vietnamese channels and all that shit. And, like, but it's hella pixelated and it, like, isn't reliable. It's like, oh, no signal or whatever. And I'm like, no, this is not going to work. This is the 100 I can't be playing around with that bullshit. So I had to go over to my friend Carmen. So if you see in my reaction, I'm at a different house. I'm at my friend Carmen. She kind of saved me <laughs> for, for the day for my reaction. But in the future, I will let you know that um, I'll probably be doing my reaction videos the next day because I usually work at night on Wednesday nights um, and certain things will happen where I won't be able to see it right when it airs. And which is better for me and I'll tell you another reason why I think this but I can watch it in the morning and do my reaction seamlessly the next day at my house so that's a perk but I just have to wait and another thing is the commercials oh my fucking god the commercials you guys I mean they were really um, distracting and I wasn't able to really get into the story um, it, it just, I mean, I couldn't, it wasn't seamless for me. So it was just very choppy. Like every two minutes there was a commercial. So I'd rather watch this show without commercials because I, I couldn't really immerse myself into it. So that being said, let's get right into this freaking review. So this episode as a whole generally was just about uh, us getting back. I mean, it's been a while, I feel like, especially for you guys, if you're on this show episode by episode, where, you know, we just had to really touch base back with these characters, you know, you kind of forget where they're at and their headspace and like what's going on with everybody. So um, it's pretty much us touching base back with all of our characters um, after like the effects of City of Light, because I mean, it's only moments, like literally moments after Pike was killed and um, Allie was destroyed. So we just touched right back where we left off. There's been not one minute of time break in between what we saw last season and what we saw a couple days ago. So we just see generally everybody's grieving, everybody has a lot of pain and suffering, you know, because they can feel their pain after being in the City of Light. There's a lot of, you know, dead around. It's just not looking good at all at Polis, it's just looking like a hot mess and everybody is just re super like um resentful against people that are unlike them 
And so, and uh, we see, basically we see that Indra's alive, Roan's alive, uh, and Asgata or Ice Nation is not fucking with Tree Kuru and Sky Kuru. Um, and they just want war and vengeance. And we are kind of just told about the six month radioactive thing. So that's the whole recap of this episode. Honestly, like that's what they were trying to do. That was the purpose of this episode. It's just to set up everything, see where our characters' headspaces are at and where what we are to expect to see next from them um, and how they're feeling like <laughs> emotionally and all that. So, I mean, very basic, very simple story that they were telling in this first episode. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about Clark because, um, you know, she walks out. All of a sudden, everybody's like, Juan Heda, Juan Heda. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Here we go again. Like, nobody's forgotten about this Juan Heda shit. So, you know, Clark can never get a fucking break. Um, pretty much what she's trying to do in this episode is make peace. Uh, and by definitely saving King Roan, now that she finds out that he's alive, um, try to get everybody working together because she knows and um, that the world isn't safe for them and they don't have time to be fighting each other. Sandy, stop. <sighs> My cat, sorry. She's destroying things. Um, yeah, so, you know, like... She knows that we don't have time to be fucking around and doing dumb shit by arguing with each other when the world's gonna end in six months. So that's pretty much Clark's mission is trying to get people to stop acting stupid and stop trying to kill each other because they're all gonna be dead anyway. Unless they try to figure something out together. Um... And yeah, and uh, we also see her just like, I mean, the, the Lexa wound was very, very fresh in this episode. We'll touch back more into that a little bit later. But uh, the Lexa, well, let's just go into it. So I saw a lot of uh, like this episode when it came to the, the flame and Lexa. I mean, it's very, very fresh. I just saw like Clark having to, you know, grieve and just let go. And, you know, she can't be stuck on on um saying goodbye to Lexa because she um you know they had their moment in the city of light they saw each other because it was very abrupt when it happened uh back in season three you know when she actually was shot and they didn't really get that goodbye moment and so and they finally got that and now Clark is able to just like let go yeah it still hurts yeah it's still fresh but we see her throughout the episode you know looking at the flame telling her mom and, you know, talking about how she feels about her. And then, you know, eventually at the end of the episode, she ends up giving the flame to Rowan because, you know, I mean, sorry to say, but, you know, Lexa ain't the only one in that flame. It's the spirit of all the commanders and she can't just hold on to that, you know, because that's like their spiritual thing that guides all of their communities. So, you know, she was eventually going to have to give up the flame and to whoever the rightful commander is going to be next. I didn't think that they were going to use the flame as a commander thing, but whatever, who cares? So, you know, it was just her, you know, really grieving and letting go. And it's still very, very, very fresh. If we think about like the time uh, scale, uh, everything has been so fresh for all of these characters in the matter of the time frame that uh, we've been through season one through three so that's why people like don't that's why I don't get when on a whole bunch of other reviews where people are blaming all these characters for all these mistakes when it hasn't really been that much time for them to get over it it's not like it's been a year it's been like two months or a couple of weeks as opposed to you know having all this time to grieve and cope and all this and of course they've been having all these obstacles in the way where they don't have time to do that shit so it was good to see, like, she's finally letting go and, you know, putting the Lexa thing to peace. You know, she loves her. They'll always be lovers in, in some way. Um, but, like, I'd rather see her move on um, and, you know, deal with it in a healthy way as opposed to other characters in the show who we will get back into later. So it's just a healthy way of her to to honor Lexa. And I'm, I'm glad that we got to see that. That's great. Um, let's go into Kane and Abby. 
definitely we see some romance brewing there for sure. Um, I was wondering how Kane was feeling about being hooked to that stake. Like that shit must hurt um, a lot and he better go and get that shit helped out because he could get infected or some shit. It didn't look good. So we saw that. And we saw uh, Kane and Abby keeping an eye on like their children. I know, even though we may we may not know this, but Kane might be Bellamy's dad. Um, <laughs> but not that hasn't been spoken. So you know, I'm just making shit up. But he does take on this father figure father figure role. Um, that's um uh, and is definitely keeping a close eye on Bellamy. I mean, since season three and definitely this first episode. Um, and, you know, uh, Abby is comforting her, her daughter and, you know, it's, they haven't really seen each other in a while. They were both chipped, you know, they have to keep an eye on like how they're feeling. You know, these are young people who have gone through so much, like, and if they aren't, you know, don't have a support system, then they can end up on a really dark path like other characters in this story. So, um, I really liked to see that cause they definitely need that. And, uh. And I like how Kane is, like, telling, like, Bellamy that he can be redeemed. It's not too late for him. He is a good guy. He has just led down a wrong, dark path. And, like, he's like, don't look back, you know. Make yourself who you want to be. Be who, you you know, your mom would want you to be. Be, like, the man that you know you are instead of, you know, being deceptive to himself. And he does have a chance, chance for redemption. He's just telling him, don't look back. You're still a good guy. You still have a good heart. You just made some bad decisions, move on and make sure that you're doing better, what do you say, better today than you did yesterday. And so I really liked that moment because, you know, they're all kids and they all, you know, and he's a young man. What What is Bellamy, like 20? Like, <laughs> so yeah, I really liked that Kane was, you know, telling him like, you did the right thing today. Make sure you keep doing even better. So, I liked that. I really liked that. Let's get to Echo real quick. I have in my notes, it says, this bitch. Because she was getting on my nerves. Um, she is just so snake-like and just so, like, she's a liar. And I just, I don't like her character. I don't know if they're going to try to redeem her and make us like her or whatever. But I don't fuck with her at all. I haven't fucked with her since Mount Weather. And I don't fuck with her now. She needs to go. She's very, like, warmongering. Like, what the fuck is your problem, bitch? Like, calm the fuck down. Can't look around you. Everybody's fucked up and you're just still warmongering and, like, trying to start hella shit. So, I'm, like, over her. Like, seriously, I'm over her. She needs to go. That's all I gotta say about her. Let's move to Harper, Raven, Jasper, and Monty. Because they were all in the same area and everything was kind of happening with them all at the same time. So, we don't have to talk about each and every one of them. Uh, so I'm really liking the uh, Harper um, and Monty romance that they have. Um, and I was kind of like, Harper, shut the fuck up. Like, you know that Monty really cares about you. He was, you know, like, saved your life in Mount Weather and made sure you're okay. Like, bitch, please. Like, you know that Monty is a good, like, genuine homie who really does, like, care a lot about her. So I was kind of like, what the fuck are you even asking that question for? Anyway, but I do love them. They're really cute. Um, I'm really interested to see in uh, Raven's uh, story play out in season four because her brain's like updated and uh, she's definitely on a roll to try to figure out this whole radiation problem. Um, I liked their little walkie-talkie moment on um, looking for Bellamy and Clark and uh, them all just thanking each other for, for everything. My cat, you guys, she's retarded. Okay, so, yeah, and so I liked that, and I'm really interested to see, like, the pain in her leg, like, how it's gonna be from there, and if she's gonna be able to find a cure for her leg, or what, what's going on, and, like, what she's gonna do, I mean, in this, what's her role in this story? I mean, I know she's gonna tr try to help save the world, or whatever, but I just, like, they pretty much just set us up to be curious about where she's gonna go next. So yeah, let's get into Jasper for a little bit. That shit was dark, you guys. I was like, whoa, 
whoa, this shit went left. Like, so left. I was like, why are you grabbing a gun? Why are you being creepy? Why are you leaving notes? Oh, shit. This is really dark. And, like, Jasper, seriously, we ain't got time for that shit. Can we have a good moment at all? Like, what? So, you're gonna pull the trigger and have fucking Monty and them come in on you, like, after all the shit that they just went through and you're just gonna add that to the pile? Like, for real, bruh, that is so just selfish to me. And so, I didn't like that. And I I see where he's at, like, mentally, but, uh, and it makes a lot of sense. Like, his character... I mean, some of those characters would be like Jasper. That is very realistic in real life. That's why I like his character. Um, but since he, like, said he was going to go watch the sunset. Oh, my God. One second. Sorry. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, like, it's very realistic for him to feel that way. And it's definitely giving us an, another kind of perspective of how people would deal with this kind of world. Um... All I guess I can say is, will he try it again? Will he end up killing himself by the end of the season or what? Or will he um, kind of like turn around? Or is he going to just be like, fuck it, we're all going to die in six months anyway. I might as well ride it out. Not sure. I think that might be the direction they're going to take him. We'll see. But that was very, very dark. That was a huge, super dark moment. I was like, damn. <laughs> anyway, so let's move on from that. Um, let's talk about Jaha for a little bit. I really liked his... I want to see more of Murphy and Jaha because they're the only two that kind of um, went to the City of Light together and, like, had that whole interaction since season two and, you know, all of that. So, um... I just want to see more of them inter their interactions. If if they will give that to us. I'm not sure if they will or not. But I was interested to see them talk for a little bit. Because, yeah, uh, Murphy was kind of, like, telling him, like, this is on you. Like, what the fuck? You're the one. I was there. You can't try to lie and say that, you know, this is anybody's fault but yours. Because I was there the whole time. You know, you were the one looking for the City of Light. Um, this is one question that I find very interesting about Jaha, though. Where did Al or Jaha end and Ali begin? So we know that Jaha went looking for the City of Light for hope and, uh, you know, whatever, because he was feeling, like, lost without a son and all this stuff. And, like, I don't think that Ali is what he was expecting to find in the City of Light. And so he takes this chip. Where do you... Where did Jaha and Ali... Where did Jaha end and Ali begin? Like, do you think he should be completely blamed for just wanting to find a place uh with hope and light um and like was Ali controlling him in those decisions or were, was he making those decisions on his own I know that she was always in his ear but you know how she controls people like I want to know where that line was between him actually making conscious decisions about all the shit that he crazy shit that he was doing and all the people that he was forcing and killing, and where it was, like, Allie forcing him to do that. If you guys understand what I'm saying. Because I want to know where that line was drawn. Also, I'm very interested to see uh, his storyline play out in Season 4. Is he going to die? Is he going to try to redeem himself? Is, is he going to explain himself more to us about what his thought process was or what he was really, really thinking in the City of Light, or if he was trying to get out, you know, or what. Like, I kind of just want to know a little bit more about uh, Jaha without Ali now, because we've had Jaha with Ali for so long that I want to see where Jaha without Ali really, really is. Um, Murphy. Murphy seems like he's just same old Murphy trying, you know, trying to survive. Um, cause he left with, on, um, uh, Imori at the end, he kind of changed his mind and ended up going with her. But we also see in the trailer that he's like talking to Clark, um, and talking about how I was saving you, da 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 So, it seems like they find their way back to Arcadia at some point. So I'm just kind of curious about, like, did he really leave? Did he change his mind? Or, like, how did he end up in that scenario with Clark? We'll see.
it kind of seems like they're back in, in Arcadia, or they end up back there. But uh, I'm not sure. We'll just have to wait and see about him. And uh, another character that we're going to have to wait and see about is Octavia. We just saw, like, some badass moments with her, but we didn't really get, like, much uh, story um, with her. I think that we're just going to have to wait for other episodes to really get into her storyline and where she is after killing Pike. And she seemed like she was down for the cause when in this episode, so... You know, but it also seems like she goes on her own or with Indra. So we just have to wait and see where that, how that plays out. And I'm down for it. Um, oh, and I put Bellamy like way ahead, but I want to talk about him last because he's my favorite. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so he was definitely very Clark focused in this episode. Um, and very just like protective of her and, um, just very conscious about everything that she was doing. I'm glad to see them back together again because they were a good team. Like, I liked season two, uh, Bellamy and Clark, where, you know, like, Finn, the whole Finn thing, and he's trying to, like, tell her, hey, like, your homie's tripping. We, you know, he was shot up this whole place and everything. So they kind of, like, started getting closer. And um, I like to see them back together as a team officially like I was kind of tired of this whole like argument that they were having um and uh it seems like Clark is a, like kind of like his lighthouse like without her he finds himself in a very dark place um and a, you know being misled it's like she's like his lighthouse um and and I get that like if you have feelings for somebody even or just like if you're a friend with somebody and they you know betray you and leave you you know, I can see how somebody young like that and, you know, emotional and, you know, like Bellamy and very caring can be very hurt by that and very betrayed. Um, so I see where his character is um, and I can see him really trying to pull himself out of that. He has his um, friend back and it seems like he really, really has more feelings about Clark than they seem to let on. But we all know it's there. Because I love the Bellamy and Clark relationship. It's, it's perfect just the way it is. And I know that it's building towards something where at least one of them comes to the conclusion and lets the other know how they feel. Like, we'll get back into that. But, um... Oh, yeah. And then we, we have a little Echo Bellamy moment, which... <sighs> Oh my god. So this bitch, she seems like she only really wants to talk to Bellamy. Um, and I'm just kind of like, why? Can't you just leave him alone? Like, you've done enough. Like, he doesn't want to hear anything more that you have to say. You already did what you did. You stay over here. He gonna be over here. Like, he does not fuck with her. And she needs to just let it go. Um... Who gives a fuck about if it was orders or not? Like, she betrayed him. He fucking saved her life. He could have left all of them in that fucking cage. And that's what I don't get. Like, everybody, like... Like, he busted his ass in Mount Weather. Sleeping in fucking ducks and all this shit. Getting hung upside down for all these fucking people. And they just, like... Like, have no, no thanks or nothing for them motherfuckers at all. And, like, that, I get it. I get why he's fucking mad. Because he's like, whoa, I risked my life for all you bitches. And now you want to be haters. And now you fucking want to leave me. Like, like I'm some type of bad guy. Like, what the fuck? I'd be mad, too. I really would. So, I was just like, Echo, just go. Just go. And it, I don't know what's up with her. Like, why she keep trying to fucking talk to him? Like, I know... Bob Morley's freaking fine as hell, so that's probably what it is. But, bitch, please. Like, he has his eyes on somebody else, and you got his fucking homie all, like, locked up behind your sword and shit. Like, bitch, no. Okay? <laughs> so, I'm really liking uh, Bellamy's redemption arc that we might be seeing with him. Like, he's gonna be, I think, a really, really uh, pivotal role in help and save the world and you know maybe people will fucking thank him this time and we saw Clark thank him finally for being like hey thanks for keeping me alive because yeah that's what he's been doing this whole fucking time and we ain't never heard a thank you from your bitch ass 
So yeah, like, I'm just tired of people with treating Bellamy like, like he's just some lap dog that can just be slapped around and when he come and save, come through to save your fucking life, you don't get no, he don't get no thanks. Like, what the fuck? So, but yeah, I'm really like, like, I like the moment where he's looking at Clark when she's like really hurt about Lexa and, um, they're just hinting at, at his feelings for her. They really are. Like, it's very obvious. It's extremely fucking obvious. Okay. I don't know why people are acting like they don't see it. And you know, this is the one thing I will say you guys, these reviews, I mean, I talk about what I see. I don't make shit up. What I see on the screen is what I talk about and what I discuss. Point blank. Okay. I'm not going to make it up. I'm not going to be like, Oh, this is what I want. So this is what I see, or this is how I feel. So they, they're not doing that, you know, or they're doing this or, you know, like, People just need to calm down, watch the show. If you like the show, watch it. If you don't, don't. It's that simple. Find something else. Um, yeah, so when I do these reviews, these aren't me making shit up. This, this is me talking about what I saw in the episode and what I think is, is they're putting out for us to really uh, get from the episode. And so it's kind of easy to make predictions. It's kind of easy to see that... Bellamy has feelings for Clark and Clark probably has feelings for Bellamy too. Maybe, you know, she's a little behind because she's fresh off being hurt from Lexa, but I mean, six months, that's really a short amount of time for somebody. If they really, really are going to start like a really meaningful relationship, that's not any amount of time to really do that anyway. So it's just building and building and building. You can see like the way that they look at each other, the way that Bellamy is so protective of her and is always watching her and making sure she's okay, you know? And Bellamy, keep doing what you're doing because you is a real one, okay? You's a real one. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this review and recap and discussion. I'm so excited for episode two. Heavy weighs the crown, I think it is. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to see. It's hard to predict because they just kind of let us know. They just kind of reacclimated us to the the 100. So season two, or episode two, should be starting to really propel the story forward. We're back. Yes. All right. So um like this video if you liked it and comment below let me know what you thought about it let me know what you think about all the characters and what's gonna happen next i'm so excited just to be back to watch the 100 and uh yeah and follow me on other platforms of social media just to see what may money's like on her daily day or uh just to also get updates on when i'll be posting videos and stuff <laughs> you know so yeah um Anything else? No. So, yeah. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all the best. Keep it gangsta. And I will see you on Wednesday or Thursday.